Hey everyone, welcome back to Twin Flame Insights. Today, we're going to talk about the real-world aspects of twin flame relationships. We're covering topics like age differences, gender roles, marriage, having kids, and other common questions from our community. By the end of this video, you should have a good grasp on how twin flame connections can impact the ins and outs of everyday life. Now, this video covers a lot and goes into some detail, so feel free to skip ahead to the chapters that you're most interested in. Also, we're going to have a quick introduction with some of the key ideas just to get everyone up to speed with twin flames. This video does get into the nitty gritty, but the specifics are broad because everyone's experience is unique with so many people worldwide. So while we aim to provide as much information as possible, remember that every situation will differ. Another crucial point to keep in mind is that the twin flame experience and connection isn't about what's happening on the outside, but is all about an internal journey of the soul and a shift in mind and energy. As we explore the details, remember that the external things aren't the main focus. So let's start with the basics. What are twin flames? There are many interpretations, but most people agree that twin flames are two people who originate from the same soul, or in other words, it's one soul living in two different bodies. Now, the next question that might come up is, does everyone have a twin flame? Well, the answer isn't a simple yes or no. On one hand, yes, because the idea of twin flames is part of how a soul's energy shows up in the physical world. But on the other hand, no, because both twin flames are not always physically incarnated at the same time. Even when they do, they may not meet or recognize each other in every life, depending on what the soul has planned for that lifetime. Just a heads up, we're not claiming we know it all. We're just sharing what we've learned and heard from others who are also on this journey. We're talking about stuff like love and spirituality here, things you feel more than you can see. It's important to keep an open mind, do a bit of your own research, and most importantly, trust your own feelings and experiences. Our goal is to help us all understand these ideas better and find our own paths to happiness and peace. We're drawing insights and knowledge from some of the great thinkers and teachers out in the world today and some from the past. Names such as Dolores Cannon, Neil Donald Walsh, Abraham Hicks, Sadhguru, Eckhart Tolle, and others like Deepak Chopra and Wayne Dyer. They've got some amazing insights that we think you'll find helpful. Now, in this video, we're going to use some specific terms. Here's a quick rundown. What do we mean when we say soul? Well, you can think of your soul as your true self, your inner being, or spirit that isn't bound by the physical world. It's your inner observer, the part of you that is aware and present beyond just thoughts or physical sensations. It's your core, your essence. Now, with your twin flame, you share this core essence, this soul. Unlike with other people, it's not a different soul, but the same one living in both of you. Now, what about the mind? This is your energy field, the intersection of the spiritual and physical, it includes your thoughts, feelings, intuition, energy, creativity, and everything that goes beyond the physical. Sometimes we call this the astral body. And the ego? That's like your personality in the world, born from your mind and linked to your physical body. It's the version of you that goes about day-to-day -day life, the version of you that is shaped by the physical world and societal norms. You and your twin flame are two distinct personalities formed from the same energy field or mind, created by one soul. This division aligns with the principle of balance, meaning that for every high, there's a low, for every left, there's a right, and in relation to energy, for every negative, there has to be a positive energy to balance it out. When a soul's energy shows up in our physical world, it takes on two forms, one that's considered divine feminine and another that's divine masculine. But don't get confused by the names, they're not about gender, they're all about the kind of energy they represent. So now we're gonna get into today's topic, starting with the twin flame age gap, which is something my twin flame and I faced as one of our most significant physical obstacles. Why do we often see big age gaps in twin flame relationships, specifically where the woman is older than the man? Now, here's an interesting way to look at it. Maybe we should be asking why the first big wave of twin flames showing up seems to follow this pattern of older women and younger men. It might tell us something about how things are changing. See, society has these norms about who should be with who. Usually, it's wealthy, powerful individuals that mostly happen to be men with younger, attractive individuals that happen to mostly be women. Another side effect of these norms and expectations is the pressures to marry young and to strive to get rich, famous, and influential. But these twin flame couples are challenging the norm. They're forming relationships that society wouldn't typically expect or approve of. Hey, there's really nothing wrong with being powerful or attractive. Those are awesome qualities and should be celebrated. But it doesn't serve us well to use these traits to determine who should be with who. Instead, society should value all of humanity for who they are and consider everyone equally. 
In a nutshell, twin flame relationships are all about the spiritual connection, not about societal norms or physical standards. It's all about your spirit or soul. That's why things like age, race, or how far apart you live might seem random if you're just looking from the outside. So, why do we often see younger men in these relationships? Well, one reason could be that those who often feel overlooked or excluded are usually the first to seek deeper spiritual connections. They're more open to spiritual journeys and personal growth. You're more likely to meet your twin flame when you're starting to explore your spirituality. Younger men, especially in today's society, are generally seen as workers and providers. Those who aren't born into wealth and don't play the corporate game often feel this the most. And these young men tend to be the people who see the flaws in the system and just decide that it isn't where they want to go and are looking for a better way. Let's take a look at how this plays out on the women's side. In all my travels and experiences with different spiritual groups, I've noticed that a good number of individuals who get involved with spirituality are women. It usually happens that people encounter their twin flame when they're really diving deep into their spiritual journey. Interestingly, this tends to happen more often for women, especially those who are more experienced and mature, while age does play a big role, it's not the main factor. Society often puts women at a disadvantage, but they tend to be more in tune with their feelings and intuition than men who are often more focused on physical strength. This means that mature women are often further along in their spiritual growth and more in tune with their divine nature. In turn, they're more likely to take on the divine feminine role, which generally has a better understanding of the whole twin flame relationship. It's not a strict rule, more like a general pattern that we can observe in the spiritual community. At the end of the day, this whole twin flame awakening thing is just part of the natural evolution of humanity and the global shift in planetary consciousness. Hey, before we go on with the video, here's a quick reminder. If you're liking what you're hearing and want to support this channel, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. It really does make a big difference. And a huge thanks to everyone who's been asking questions and joining the discussion in the comments. It's really helpful to understand what we're all experiencing, and it seems like many are learning more about this journey's details. So thanks for being part of this community. Now, we're gonna shift our focus to another topic, which is gender, physical gender. When it comes to twin flames and gender, remember it's about spiritual and energetic connections, not the physical sex of the individuals. Your twin flame could be anyone, anywhere in the world, of any race, and while they're likely to be the opposite gender, it is possible for them to be the same gender as you. Again, keep in mind when it comes to twin flames, it's not about specific outward signs or appearances, but the energy flow between the two of you. Also, when it comes to twin flames, nothing in the physical world is set in stone, especially when you consider multiple lifetimes and incarnations. Now, because twin flames are two manifestations of the same soul, but they're not born at the same time, and they don't necessarily die at the same time, you and your twin flame might have lives that only partly overlap, or sometimes only one is physically incarnated at a specific time. In some lives, you might be a man, and in others, your twin flame might be a man. You could even switch roles in lifetimes that have an overlap. The point is that there are a lot of moving parts, especially when you get into more and more complex dimensions. But as a general rule, typically, one side of a soul's energy shows up as a man, and the other side shows up as a woman. Again, with multiple lifetimes and multiple incarnations of the same soul's energy in different polarities, things are not as simple as male or female, it's not a strict rule, but for the most part, one side of the energy shows up in a male body and the other side shows up in a female body. Next, let's talk about the topic of children and their connection to twin flames. Okay, so a question we often get is about children in twin flame relationships. Specifically, if one twin flame has a child, is that child also the child of the other twin flame? Or if two twin flames have a child together, what does that mean? Let's start with a bit of background. Twin flames are two people who are on a spiritual level actually one person. They're part of a bigger group of souls, which we'll call a soul family. But your twin flame isn't a separate soul, so they're not a different member of your soul family. At the soul level, they're you. Now, when it comes to close relationships like lovers, parents, and children, these are usually soul family members. These relationships often span multiple lifetimes, with roles changing each time. So if your twin flame has a child, that child is more than likely a close member of your soul family because of their soul connection to your twin flame. Even though you're not biologically related to them, you're spiritually connected because you and your twin flame are the same soul. As for twin flames having a child together, that's totally possible. In the physical world, there would be two parents who are twin flames. But spiritually, there's only one parent. But parent really isn't the right word when we're talking about the soul level. All right, so next up, marriage and twin flames. Can they tie the knot? The short answer is yes, they can. 
But the full story gets a little more real, and in many cases, intense. So, what if you're already married to someone when you meet your twin flame, or maybe they're married to someone else? Now, before we go any further with this, here's the thing, marriage is a man-made concept. Now, it is one of the most beautiful and important and central institutions that keeps humanity together. But it's not a universal law, it's a societal construct we've come up with. That's not to say it's bad, it's just a way we've chosen to structure long-term relationships and families. But it's not a God-given rule, it's a man-made institution. So, should you ditch your spouse for your twin flame? Probably not a good idea. Usually making a quick decision like that won't do anyone any good. It's not straightforward to say whether you should or shouldn't aim to be with your twin flame who is currently married or leave your own marriage to be with your twin flame. The real aim of the twin flame journey is to align with your higher self. You see, it's not about anything you do on the outside, but more so your state of being. Once you're in tune with your soul and you're operating from a place of peace and love, the right course of action for your specific situation will become clear. This includes deciding whether to leave a relationship or marriage. You, your soul, and all the souls involved will steer you towards making the changes that need to happen. Remember, your twin flame is your other self, so if a long-term relationship is what your soul truly desires, it'll happen naturally without you having to push for it. Don't try to manipulate what's happening around you if you're feeling turmoil inside. For instance, if you rush out of your current marriage to be with your twin flame, things would probably not go well. The fear-based energy of that decision would most likely trigger the runner to run away again, sending you into a dark spiral, all while leaving the family in a pretty bad spot. Usually, these things happen when we try to control situations out of fear. It's always better to live according to your highest values and make decisions from a calm and informed mental space. If ending a relationship feels like the best thing for you, especially when there's ongoing poor treatment, lack of interest or growth, then it's probably the right move. But remember, these decisions are serious because they can greatly affect you and others around you. They should be about fully embracing your life, not running away from it. For the most part, at least at first, you should aim to work on bettering your existing relationships. Think of it as continuing to live your best life. When you do that, one of two things will happen as you continue to evolve spiritually. Your current relationship and situation might adapt and evolve with you, or they may naturally make room for something more suitable. This could be a twin flame relationship, another type of relationship, or even an improved version of your current relationships. Whatever it is, it all boils down to being in tune with your soul and letting life unfold naturally. Now, let's be clear, twin flame relationships aren't always romantic, at least not in the way movies portray love. You don't have to end up married or cohabitating with your twin flame. Putting that sort of pressure on yourself isn't needed and can lead to negativity. The key point of twin flame activation is about tapping into your energy and discovering a part of you that you were previously unaware of. This energy can then help shape you and your twin flame into the best versions of yourselves, Keep in mind, any spiritual or mental growth you achieve impacts your energy field and promotes growth for your twin flame as well. When twin flames meet at soul recognition, there's a huge release of energy that can be overpowering at first, making you feel like you're spiraling downward. But once you adjust and elevate your own energy level through spiritual practices, this experience starts to become positive, even if you're physically far away from your twin flame. As time goes on, if this energy is a part of your life, things will start to happen for you in ways you never thought possible. You'll mostly experience a sense of peace. Even though life won't always be easy, the world around you will change. When it comes to your twin flame, you'll naturally find yourselves together in a way that suits you both best. This could be as a married couple, or just as friends, or in any other situation. But whatever it ends up being, it will be the best possible outcome for you both in this lifetime. It's all about your soul fully expressing its potential and fulfilling its purpose. And this sets us up nicely for the next part. Are twin flames meant to be together? The million dollar question, are twin flames supposed to end up together? Well, the answer isn't as simple as you might think. Spirituality is all about freedom and being true to yourself. So setting strict rules like deciding if something is predestined doesn't really fit. On one hand, yes, twin flames are meant to be together. The strongest proof of this is your own desire for it. If you want something, it's actually a message from your soul about its true self. The simple fact that they find each other in this big world and feel an intense magnetic pull towards one another is more proof of this. They were made for each other. This is true. That said, being together is not a must. And being together doesn't only mean romance. Love is always a decision you make freely. It's never forced or driven by urge, impulse, obsession, need, fixation, or addiction. That choice is up to you, whichever twin flame you might be. 
The choice one makes is mirrored by the other because, in truth, there is no other. It's not forced, it comes from within. You can choose to express and experience love, which means freedom, peace, and joy, or you express fear, which leads to separation, control, ego, status symbols, and other such things. How you think, feel, and act, your body language, and your overall comfort level indicate the type of energy you're emitting, especially when you're thinking about your twin flame or twin flames in general. Another way to say this is that it's not so much that twin flames are meant to be together, but that it's natural for them to be together. When they're in their natural state of peace, it's normal for twin flames to be drawn to each other. But if they're in an unnatural state of fear, the same magnetic intensity that brings them together pushes them apart. On an energy level, you're always connected. In the real world, what happens depends on the energy you tap into when you're thinking about the connection, mainly how you see yourself and your spiritual essence. The more you connect with your spiritual essence or soul, the closer you get to the part where you and your twin flame are one. This connection firstly brings peace, personal happiness, and a better life. Then, the law of attraction naturally, logically, and seamlessly brings all parts of your soul, including you and your twin flame, together. So let's quickly touch on how to end the dark night of the soul energy and transition into union. We'll talk about how to stop the negative energy and reconnect with your soul, and eventually twin flame. It comes down to two things, detoxification and magnetization. Detoxification is about getting rid of fear energy from your mind and energy field. After that, you move on to magnetization, which is how you can naturally generate love energy through certain practices. If you're experiencing the twin flame journey, you might also go through a very tough period known as separation or the dark night of the soul. This is a really intense period and it takes a lot out of you, but there is a purpose behind it. Your soul and the universe are using this tough time to push you towards finding true peace. In the past, you might have been living more in line with your ego, but now your soul is encouraging you to elevate your energy. This shift is so dramatic that finding peace becomes not just a nice thing to have, but a necessity to keep your sanity and live a balanced life. Detoxification helps you find peace. After that, you move on to magnetization. These two processes are happening at the same time. It's just your focus that shifts. Important to mention that magnetization is not about pulling in your twin flame, but about activating and amplifying your soul's frequency. You see, you and your twin flame are one at the soul level. So when you activate your soul's frequency, you're essentially coming in contact with your true self. This true self is both you and your twin flame since you share the same core, and that's why this works. However, the main goal is to increase your soul's energy, not to pull in the person who is your twin flame. First step is to get rid of toxic energy, clean out your system of fear energy, and then allow love energy to build up. To detox, create mental, emotional, and physical space. Often, the runner in the twin flame relationship will have disappeared, which can be a helpful first step in the detox process. Your twin flame and your soul are helping you detox by creating this distance, stopping the buildup of toxic energy. If physical things remind you of your twin flame, put them away. Sometimes this means completely removing or destroying them, but always listen to your intuition and don't go further than you have to. Don't act out of anger or try to get back at your twin flame for disappearing because that just brings more toxic energy. The goal here is just to create space to allow yourself to find peace and calm. As you make progress with the detoxification process, you also move into magnetization, which involves building a spiritual practice, mainly meditation. Daily meditation, even just 15 minutes a day, is a real game changer. Other considerations include a healthy diet, staying hydrated, taking care of your physical body, reading enriching material, pursuing hobbies, and physical exercise. Meditation is especially important because it lets you tap into stillness, connect with your soul, and get higher spiritual guidance. This is where you tap into the power of the law of attraction and pull in all parts of your soul. Naturally, you and your twin flame will find yourselves coming back together. But energies can still be raw and hard to handle in the initial stages of reunion. It's okay to end a conversation and pick it up later if the energy gets out of balance. Remember, magnetization is not about attracting your twin flame. It's about magnetizing your energy field to attract all the things that your soul naturally wants. This includes wealth, health, love, happiness, soul family members, and such. Included in this are other expressions of your soul's energy that are naturally present in the physical world, including a healthy connection to your twin flame if that's something you wish to manifest. And it's important to always listen to your gut and your intuition. If it's clear and it feels right, it must be important. But if it's not clear or doesn't feel right, it must not be that important. 
At the end of the day, this whole spiritual journey is about the realization of the most magnificent version of who you can be. All right, thanks for tuning in. If you're gaining new insights or if this content resonates with you, remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment to share your thoughts. Thanks to everyone who's commented, we try to stay up to date and answer the comments as best as possible. We're also looking into doing live streams and one-on-one -on -one sessions. We're still figuring out where the interest levels are with that and deciding what direction to go with the channel. So far, thanks for all the feedback. Again, thanks for watching and interacting with the content. We wish you all the best in your journey and personal life. And until next time, take care and stay blessed.